Hey, I'm Daniel, and on this episode of The Film Crazy Show, I was joined by guest Justine Warrington to talk about the Lifetime original movie, Secrets of a Gold Digger Killer. In the film, multi-millionaire Stephen Beard fell for Celeste Beard, an attractive waitress played by Julie Benz, who served him at a country club in Austin, Texas, who ended up marrying Stephen, and and this eventually resulted in murder, as the title might give away. The film premiered on June 13th on Lifetime and will have its next air date on July 11th. Here is Justine Warrington to introduce the show. Hi, hi, my name is Justine Warrington and I play Tracy Tarleton in The Secrets of a Gold Digger Killer. And you are watching The Film Craziest Show. Cool, thanks Justine. Great to have you here. I am Daniel, host of The Film Craziest Show. Nice to be here, thank you. Cool. So. Um, figured I would start first with what what was it like sharing the screen with Julie Benz? Awesome. Julie Benz is such a powerhouse and such a, a, a an incredible actor and she's really funny and very giving and very caring and a really authentic human being. It was a joy. Okay. Did, did you ever watch her on Dexter? I did and uh, uh, various other shows. I've seen her in, and so I was, yes, intimidated by uh, sharing the screen with her because she's just got so much experience and she's such a powerhouse. Yeah. Okay, to spoil Dexter for anybody, but like that scene, like I remember how I felt like with the end of her character arc, just like that just crushed me. (laughs) Her too, apparently. She talks about it in interviews, yeah. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Now I I thought her costuming was really interesting in this film just with like how she's costumed as uh celeste and like just opposed just opposed how she was costumed on dexter even right Mm, mm -hmm. did you want to talk about how she was costumed i mean babe town bands yeah look at that blue dress (laughs) she they did a great job i mean she's supposed to be uh uh yeah like a, a very seductive very charismatic woman and they nailed it and and she is so you know not hard to do true and i I thought a very interesting i found it very interesting how she shows up for the courtroom scenes yes indeed kind of like little miss prim and proper secretary exactly now would you want to tell people a bit about the film certainly so it's based on true events In the late 90s in Austin, Texas, um, three people were involved, well, more than three, but three especially were involved in a terrible, terrible crime. Um, Celeste Beard uh, seduced a wealthy older gentleman, Stephen Beard, and married him and made her way into his life. And uh, then also seduced a new friend who, uh, Tracy Tarleton, who ended up falling in love with her and very much manipulated her into uh, uh, doing her whims so that she could get the man's inheritance. Uh, so it's a very tragic and terrible story that actually happened. Okay. And what was it like during the research for this film? Gosh, <laughs> it, it, thank goodness there was, you know, uh, as an actor who needs to, to get behind the story, thank goodness there is a, quite a bit of material out there about it. It was daunting. It was intimidating. It was uh, shocking. A lot of like, wow, like, oh my goodness, these poor, poor people. And uh, uh, what was it like? It was a real journey. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Perhaps a similar question, but what's it like preparing to play a real person? And did you get to meet Tracy? I didn't, unfortunately. That wasn't in the cards. Uh, I would have liked to. And I'm really grateful uh, for the experience. And I hope I did it justice to some degree with some humanity. Uh, what was it like to prepare for the role, did you say? Yeah, and just what's it like preparing for to play a real person even? It's so scary. <laughs> it's really, really intimidating because it, it, people will judge that. And uh, also, but uh, outside of judgment, that's actually just a silly actor insecurity thing to say, but it's actually more like, um, I want to honor the real person who went through this horrific journey and uh, and that is the, the weight that I carry for that. I noticed that Celeste Beard had like a Wikipedia page, but Tracy Tarleton did not. So was hmm. there like as many interviews out there about Tracy? I didn't find that many. Nope. Nope. I, I found a tiny handful, a lot more of Celeste. 
Okay. Now, did you prefer not being able to like prepare in that way or would you have rather have had found more interviews with Tracy? I love diving into any material I can, it, whether I'm playing a fictional character. This is my first time playing a, a real life person. Uh, um, but I love to dive in and research as much as possible in any capacity. Yeah, so yeah. Okay. Now, I, I also have an acting question just because like obviously you're I mean, all of these are going to be acting questions, but <laughs> just, just uh, I guess. Um, Celeste convinces your character that Steve is this monster. So when you actually read the script, did you s skip over Steve's lines just to like keep the illusion intact? That because he's he's very nice in the film. <laughs> That's such a cool question. Uh, I don't, as an actor, no. I read everything, okay. and I'll read someone's journals if they have it. I'll read anything I can uh, because I I want to also get a sense of the entire picture. I know some actors maybe work that way, where they're just like, just show me my world so it's real to me, you know. But that's not how I work. Okay. Okay. Cool. Nice. Mm -hmm. Now going into the the, the courtroom scenes. Um, this is actually my first. I think my first interview where there has been a courtroom scene. So, so what's, what, what's it like? What's, what's the day on set like? Is it a bit more serious than other days? Yeah, it, it, it's one of the climactic parts of the film for sure. And uh, it was funny because we shot during COVID, right? Okay. It's still during COVID, it's always during COVID. But um, so the different protocols are such that, uh, so the jury booth would have been filled with people but on the day, they shot it all in kind of chunks and blocks. So we never had the full ensemble in the room all at once. We okay. had the characters that were going to be appearing on camera for safety purposes. So I'm doing my stuff in the courtroom and I'm looking over this kind of like, maybe there's one juror there. I'm like, hey, <laughs> when there's supposed to be a dozen or something. So it's a lot of, it's a lot more make-believe in that situation. Um, and it really feels like you're on trial. I mean, it's so funny when, you, you know, as actors, we put our bodies in, in spaces and positions and then it starts to just come to life. It's really trippy. And then the lawyer, Rob LaBelle, who played the lawyer cross-examining me was just so mean and so cruel. And it just really, yeah, just, you really get swept up in it. Yeah, like I was gonna say, that's intense him like cross-examining you. So like, mm -hmm. like is, what's that pressure like? trying to like remember your lines as he's like ribbing into you? Uh, yeah, it, it, it's not so much, I'm not worried about learning uh, about the lines. Like I get them okay. really, really down. Sometimes you lose them, but whatever. Just cause okay. you're caught up in a moment usually. Uh, uh, but it's more about just wanting to surrender and really be affected by it because it's when an actor is giving you such gold all one can do is receive it and respond accordingly. And that's a real gift. Okay. Now, also, you're obviously this character is very quite serious, but you're able to bring some humor into it at times, like when you say like, oh, I get bail. So what was that? <laughs> yeah. What was it like bringing the humor here? I appreciate that. I appreciate that you got the humor. And I think that's in the writing for sure. And probably in the way that Robin was directing me. Uh -huh. uh, because for the for me living it, it was just like really an honest question. Like, a lifeline, a tiny little lifeline. That was, yeah, I didn't try to make it funny. I'm glad it read that way because it is. <laughs> okay. Now, um, what, what about uh, what about Julie Benz as Celeste bringing in some humor, especially when she's talking about coffin shopping? Right? I mean, wow. Did she ever have a lot of great material to play with? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm glad you're finding some of it humorous. Not that it's to be made fun of, obviously, and we're not, but it's, uh, sure. uh, it's certainly, it, it's well written. There's a lot of, a lot of bits in the writing which make you go, oh yeah, like this is a mastermind. This is somebody that's really got this going on. Uh, yeah, she had so much to play with I, and I think she did an amazing job. Yeah, I, th I think, I think it just comes to the ter territory where it's, it almost has like a satirical edge with just like yeah. about gold diggers, maybe. Cool, I'm glad you see it that way. That's awesome. Yeah, at least with her being like, like, like she can't see that like her wanting to keep shopping isn't weird, right? 100%, and that's the thing about living the characters, right? You just, you're just so in it, you believe what's going on. And so it doesn't seem irrational or absurd to you is this is just your life. 
don't like anyone in our lives. What do you mean? It's strange. This is just my life. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Now, I had a question about one of your other films, um, Dragged Across Concrete. Mm. Now, I, I haven't watched it yet, but can you tell us a bit about your character from that one? Certainly. Well, I recommend you see it. I think it's on Amazon Prime. Oh, oh is it? Okay. Uh, uh, what a film. So S. Craig Zoller, it's his third film. Uh, his second one with Vince Vaughn, stars Vince Vaughn, Mel Gibson, Thomas Kretschmann, Tori Kittles, Michael Jai White, uh, and I'm in it. Yay. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Fred Melamed, Jennifer Carpenter. It's a, an amazing ensemble cast. Uh, so I play Cheryl. Uh, so the film is a, it's a um, crime thriller, uh, crime drama really, really heavy, really, really dark. Uh, and it follows these various characters who are uh, getting in on a bank heist. I play Cheryl who works at the bank and gets caught up in the absolute horror, uh, becomes a hostage and terrible, terrible things happen. And I have an amazing fun scene at the end with Vince and Mel, I'm not gonna give it away. <laughs> okay, great. It premiered yeah. in Venice and it was an amazing, what, a, what an awesome film, I'm so proud of it. Okay. Yeah, I, I saw some pictures of you, like, you kind of look like a hostage, so that was a, that's why I was like, ooh, like, this is kind of like the opposite side of playing a kind of criminal here, right? Was it the duct tape over my eyes and the, and the, my hands tied, or what gave it away? <laughs> <laughs> Probably those. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a pretty dead giveaway, right? <laughs> that was a, that was a really intense role. I, I had fun playing that, believe it or not. <laughs> Well, well, thank you for, for remembering back to all those cast members that you listed. Oh, yes. Well, an oh, honor. Yes. Exactly. Now, back to um, Secrets of a Gold Digger Killer, which is mm -hmm. kind of a mouthful of a title, eh? but it's kind I of know. fun. I have to look at my notes to, to remember the, the order of the Gold Digger Killer. Totally. Yeah. Somebody called um, it Confessions of a Gold Digger Killer. I'm like, oh, no, there's no confessions here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe at one point. Yes. <laughs> Secrets, dirty, dark secrets. <laughs> now, um, it's real life, so I don't think we can spoil it too much. Mm -hmm. um, but at the beginning of the film, is that actually you sneaking around in the in the yard going to go kill Steve? That's actually Tracy, yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. I, I couldn't, I, obviously you can't really tell under all the, the, the hood and stuff. So I was just wondering. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Tracy. That's that's the opening of the. Well, we don't want to give it all away, but yeah. Oh, I thought this was kind of a fun one. Um, are there are there actually kind of like like obviously at various points and um, Tracy and Celeste meet in one of those kind of mental health spas, mm -hmm. kind of retreat slash wellness spa. Are it's kind of a strange thing. Um, are there are there actually like spas like that in real life? Yeah, and so when in doing the research, there was actually a place, I think they changed the name in the film, but um, it, it's a place in Texas. And uh, yeah, this is a thing I guess people do. They go to sort of upscale mental health retreats to try and get their lives back together. At least it, it was it was upscale in our movie, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, how did, did, did you guys give thoughts about like how like, Tracy would Tracy herself would afford going to a place like that. Did we give thought to it? Uh, I, I'm. I mean, she had a full time job. <laughs> she was an upstanding citizen in the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's true. It just seems expensive, right? <laughs> true. Maybe it's state sanctioned. I don't actually know. That's a good question. <laughs> okay. Now, um, did you guys filmed in Texas? No, we filmed in Vancouver. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. You, you just mentioned the wellness spa in Texas. So I was like, okay. So what was it like filming in Vancouver? It's great because I live here. <laughs> so it's not far to go. True, <laughs> that's true. Go to set. Uh, I love being able to shoot at home. I love shooting abroad as well. So yeah, uh, Julie flew in obviously and um, a number of other cast members are from here in Vancouver. Okay, cool. What's, what, what's, the, what's the commute like? What's the what? Sorry, what's the commute like? Just going to to work back home. Oh, the commute. Yes, I said that very- The weird. commute, yes. <laughs> uh, let's see, well, we were in Langley, that's about an hour away. Uh, we were also in Vancouver, you know, a 15 minute drive from my house. I just drive, I blast the radio and run my lines. 
Okay. Okay. Um, actually, this, this this question doesn't have anything to do with um, this film, but I had Alex Ponovic on the show the other day, yeah. and I from that one I had asked um, how you guys say caramel or caramel because there's mm -hmm. a there's a how do you how do you say how do you say I it? say caramel. Okay. See, and not all we say caramel. So I just really? I just yeah that just came to mind because I said commute really commute really weird. But I don't think I say that word too often. And Carmel. Huh. Carmel sounds like the, the place. Yeah. See, I, I think I think I'm just saying I think I'm just saying commute wrong. And I just had not seen the said that word in a while. Kind of fun, hey. I love that guy. I know, right? Yeah, we talked about his film Chained, which was pretty cool. I've seen it. Oh I've really? Loved. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, I, I've been asking this one lately. Do you have any fun stories from set that you guys like to tell? Are you like to tell? Fun. I mean, it, yeah, it is fun. It's weird because it's in, it, it's in COVID, so we're all in our shields and our masks, and it becomes less personal and and it's less chatty and stuff with the crew like usual. So that that was um, fun trying to connect in spite of it. <laughs> Okay. I guess. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, Beverly Elliott was a blast to work with. She plays the nail uh, spa woman. And I just saw her performance in it. She's awesome. Uh, yeah, she was a blast to hang out with and talk to because she's just such a veteran. That's a biz and just such an awesome woman. You said you watched this one recently? Secrets of a Gold Digger Killer? Yeah, exactly. Oh, I've seen it. Yes. Okay. What do you think of it? Oh my gosh, I mean, it's, it's what a film. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, I'm really proud of it. I'm really, I really like it. They did a great job. Robin did a great job directing the cast. The performances are really, really good. Okay. Mm -hmm. and it, is it interesting for you guys like making this film in like 2021 when this happened in like 1999? I mean, yeah, I don't know. Does it feel like a 90s? Does it feel like 90s vibe to you? The only, the burner phones felt like <laughs> yeah. early 2000s. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But otherwise it feels pretty modern. Like it, like it could have, like it definitely could happen today. I know, I felt like it wasn't really era specific even though it is set in the 90s. I don't know that it, if that plays entirely, do you know what I mean? It, it, yeah. Uh, but it, so it maybe has more of a timeless quality that way. Okay, yeah, because like I wouldn't have known other than me just researching it after the fact, right? that it's set in the 90s yeah or the at least the crime happened in the 90s yeah yeah for sure mm. poetic um, license right with a with what with filmmaking i suppose yeah that's true mm -hmm. that's true and i had i i found one funny thing in my research i don't know if you've discovered it as well but i was reading that celeste uh learned that like her and five other inmates published a cookbook called from the big house to your house about mm -hmm. recipes that could be made in prison cells with ingredients from the prison commissary. Did, did you come across that too? Now that you mention it, I did catch wind of that. Isn't that something? Good for her. <laughs> Are you going to try it? What? Are you going to try it? The recipes? I'll have to look up the book. <laughs> I don't know what kind of recipes would be in there. I wonder. I, I Luckily, I haven't been to prison, so I don't know what the food is like. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but it's good it's good for her finding a second career running there right we gotta keep living our lives right no matter what that's true now um when when this is we had chatted before about the the premiere but do you could you plug when it premier when your film premieres uh this sunday june 13th seven central eight eight seven central do you have that in front of you? It's right here. Um, I, th I think I think it's 8 p.m. Yes. 8 p.m. 7 Central. 8 p.m. Oh. 7 Central. Ooh, awesome. Okay. <laughs> At least in America, I think uh, Canada might be a different day, but we'll I'll I'll find that out. I, I'll find that out and put we'll it keep in the posted, post. Yeah. Exactly. Now, did did you have anything else to add? Oh gosh, let's see. Hmm. I hope you all tune in. I hope you tune in. I hope you come and watch Julie Benz and Ellie Gabay and Roan Curtis and myself and the whole cast and see Robin Hayes uh, directing this Lifetime 
uh, television movie uh, based on a real tragedy. And I hope you enjoy it. Cool. <laughs> and oh, I, I had one more question from that. Um, well, was it cool and neat for you, like seeing Julie Benz acting with like Ron Curtis and who plays Christine and just that dynamic with the mother daughter dynamic? I love it all. I love being on set. I love watching good actors. I love seeing their choices that they come up with. Yeah, I could be a fly on the wall all day on film sets. It's awesome. <laughs> were, were you there on set when you weren't filming? No. I, I mean, I was on set, but I'd be in the makeup trailer or I'd be in okay. my own trailer waiting to be on set. But I didn't like visit on days that I was not working because I was at home, you know, learning my lines for the next day. <laughs> So Justine Warrington, who plays Cherry, Tracy Tarleton in Secrets of a Gold Digger Killer, which is premiering on Lifetime this weekend. Thank you for chatting with me on the Film Crazy Show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Cool.